Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I present the Max Space Plane atop the AN-225, something I have been developing through many videos, and finally we are here. However, don't get too excited. There are a lot of problems. Now, I'll get somewhere by the end of this video, but it won't be perfect. So, just, uh, just a warning, don't get your hopes up. The first problems we have are pretty acute, you might say. Uh, you notice that the vertical speed is positive, but we're not actually going up. It turns out that this runway slopes up, and I was actually fooled by that. And in fact, the collider for the runway keeps on going like this. This is from the real KSC pack from ages ago, and the collider isn't super perfect. And so it hovers above the ground until here. Here it starts sloping down. This is just a collider. And as a result, we are headed down because we never actually got off the ground and that happened so the problem here is that the center of mass is way too in front of the center of lift because the max shuttle still had the stock module lifting surface and i've converted the an225 to use the far aerodynamic model which is better obviously but we had tested the max space plane with the stock stuff and it still worked so I was hoping to keep that, but that turns out not to be possible. So anyway, I have to convert it to FAR, but there's still a problem. The big external tank for the MAX space plane still has its center of mass very far forward because the engines on the space plane have to go through them, through that center of mass. But then the space plane pulls the center of lift very far back because of, of its wings. This is not convenient for the space between the center of mass, which is the red dot, and the center of lift, which is the blue dot. Uh, they need to be closer together, otherwise the plane tends to nose down. And yeah, so this is obviously barely getting off there, and we do manage to gain some altitude, but that gap is very problematic. Part of that gap is just the control surface, by the way, that does displace the center of lift. So here we are, uh, making our way to where the space plane would detach from the AN-225. And I make my first attempt at that, igniting the RD-701, uh, which is a pair of RD-704s. And uh, uh, now I already knew that we would need a custom decoupling device. Right now we're just using a stock decoupler. That's not going to be sufficient. There's going to have to be a whole rig and possibly separatrons and that sort of business. But you, you can probably figure out what's happening here. Once again, it's because the center of mass of the tank is so far forward and the tank doesn't have a lifting... it doesn't have lift, really. Uh, so all the lift is in the back. Well, it was in the back. It was in the back until that happened. Um, so anyway, I decided to retest the the little max space plane for its aerodynamics just check how its aerodynamics are it did need some tweaking before i actually did this test i just saw in the vab that it was not good and so a little bit of tweaking happened and we i say a little bit of tweaking actually a lot of troubleshooting happened in order to get the far aerodynamic model on this and still it doesn't lift off the ground very easily compared to using the stock module unfortunately and so I'm waiting for very, very high speed here to lift off. And yeah, it's, it has a tendency to roll right initially too. And that's another problem. But anyway, we get it to a decent altitude and everything looks fine after we get off the runway, more or less. And at least good enough to go on. Of course, we are... We have jets fitted on here with air intakes and all that, but the mass is basically equivalent to having the rocket engines in the back, so... It's fine. And here I come in for a landing, but I don't have uh, air brakes or a parachute, or dro a drag chute, really. So that's a bit of a problem. Also, the fact that it has a very high stall speed right now. We touch down. And the problem is the the landing gear isn't super, so we we squirrel around quite a lot, and that's gonna a, a drag chute probably would have helped out with that, because I'm trying to apply the brakes. I'm hoping I can apply the brakes without. Uh, see, I'm I'm sort of pumping the brakes slowly so that it doesn't uh, 
do exactly what it's going to do right here. Yeah, that. Well, it ended up doing that, so that, yeah. Not a pretty sight for a little space plane, so we'll have to work on that. The uh, same with the AM-225 for slightly different reasons. The AM-225 uh, just doesn't like to pitch up, but perhaps if we tweak its center of mass and center of lift, we can fix that. Part of the reason it doesn't want to pitch up is because the center of mass is too far forward, which none of this is really helping. But here we go, we are off the ground. And uh, so one thing I did to try and fix the situation is to uh, give the big tank on the max space plane, the external tank, a lifting surface. So just a stock lifting surface, not the far lifting surface. Uh, and tweaked it just sort of carefully to try and make sure that it could pull the center of lift forward. And I also set its own center of lift to match the location of its center of mass. Previously, its own center of lift was back where the model's center was. So, we are a few fixes in, but, well, we'll see. Here we go, ready for a decoupling. Now, the engines do point through the center mass, I checked that, so that's not a problem. They are sort of pointed down, but the reason why I've sort of perched the max space plane in the way it is, instead of like tilting it up, is because if you tilt it up, it adds drag, which we really don't need on takeoff right now. And also, if you tilt it up, because it's behind the center of mass, the net effect is to push the nose of the AN-225 down. And that would be bad. So <laughs> that's why it's it's laid flat so that it doesn't do anything. It just minimizes drag. Well, here again, our uh, center of mass is too far forward. That's why it's pointing towards the ground. And yeah, decoupling of the external tank seems fine. So that's the situation right now. Well, okay. Part of the problem is that the game doesn't really like to tell me where the center of lift is consistently. <laughs> so it, it just moved back on its own there for no apparent reason. So, yeah, the inconsistency of the center of lift marker is a bit of a problem, yeah. So, yeah, I I, th I guess for that previous one I hadn't done the little fix adding the, the lifting surface module to the external tank, but right there I did. You can see the position of the center of mass and center of lift on the space plane, which seems a little bit wrong, but uh, then again, it could shift on us randomly. So we have already tested the space plane's aerodynamics, so we'll just leave that alone for now until we do re-entry. At re-entry, we'll fiddle around with the center of mass and center of lift of the space plane a little bit more to make sure it's re-entering properly, but right now, that is not something we can do. I lost sound for this little clip, unfortunately. Uh, I restored afterwards, but a program started that uh, captures the sound. It uh, sort of monopolizes the sound, so that's why. Anyway, here we go. I control from the space plane and light the engines. And we try once again now with the center of mass and center lift closer together on the space plane and tank. And, well, at least we make a go of pointing up. Right, it seems to be able to point above the horizon a little bit better now, but not better enough. It's def definitely still having trouble here. Also, I decide that my manual control plus SAS is probably not the best way to manipulate it. There's just too much roll. We need something to handle it a little bit more steadily. Eventually, if I can cook up a KOS script to deal with it, that would be ideal, but I decide that MechJeb's smart ASS would probably do the trick. So here we are taking off again, and this time with more of an adjustment to the external tank, moving the its own center lift even further forward, actually fur, further forward than its center of mass, and also increasing the amount of lift that it gets with the stock module. So it's sort of a hack, but I don't know how to do lifting body surfaces with FAR, so it's the best I could do. If FAR had like a special lifting body module, that would be nice, but... Normally speaking, there would be lift from the external tank because, well, there just would be. Just like the nose of any rocket. So here we go again. 
It is possible to release the max at a higher altitude, but it's really tedious to get there and still maintain a decent Mach number. So it just takes a really long time. You can see right now we're like 38 minutes into the flight. Of course I did fizz warp uh, to speed that up, but I checked the flight data to verify our heading because I wanted to make sure that got programmed into Smart ASS properly, disable the atmospheric autopilot, which I used to fly very often. And now we are ready to go again. Actually, once we decouple, the Smart ASS stops responding. Even though we're controlling from the space plane, uh, it's off, you see. So that's a bit of a problem. And I try and get a hold of things, but it's already, it's already in a bad bad way. So, yeah, this is not going to work out very well. As I understand it, the AN-225 was supposed to descend before releasing so that it separates properly from the max space plane, but ascending first uh, is an option and I think on my most successful try in this video, that is the option I go with. Fortunately on that previous try, I had the foresight to save, so I did quick save on that. And so we just picked it up after we got to altitude in this situation right here. And so then you can see I've pitched up a little bit here. And then we release. Again, there'll be a custom decoupler sort of situation there instead of what happens. But at least it doesn't all blow up. I think that has to do with the fact that the external tank here is one piece. If it was multiple pieces, like with procedural tanks, uh, it would probably have to be multiple procedural tanks. Uh, that would not survive. In fact, on the tests that I did with the Max spacecraft three years ago, it was because we had a procedural tank that we had a lot more explosions, let me put it that way. So this is not working great, but, well, no but really. But we can try again. We can try again. So quick loading. And this is a 10 degree pitch up, you see. And that improves the situation. And I quickly set Smart ASS since it always gets unset. And now we are pointing up for once. But it occurs to me that at a very high speed at this altitude, the wings will still rip off. We've seen that a few times. Uh, we're still in thick enough air that the wings will rip off if we're going too fast and right now we're not pitching up We're not really doing that. So I throw all down which again. I did not configure these engines These are the realism overall configurations and it seems like in kerosene hydrogen oxygen mode It can throw all down basically to the thrust level of the hydrogen oxygen mode So we do have that much throttling and I use it to mitigate the speed of the acceleration so that we don't accelerate so fast that things would apart. We do not want to have high dynamic pressure, in other words. After we pitch up though and get to a decent height, it's a little bit better, so I throw back up, but we've got a fuel problem. I need to switch the mode on the engines, but I unfortunately, I thought I had action grouped it, I had action grouped it, but apparently uh, not on this copy, if you will. So I um, messed up and it, I tried to press the action group and it didn't work. Uh, fortunately, when I switched engine mode manually, even though the engine had been out, uh, they started up again, which is good because right now they only have one ignition. If it was me configuring the engines, I would probably give them more than one ignition just for the heck of it. Uh, at least two, uh, but again, these are the com does the configuration that comes with realism overhaul for the RD 704 slash 701. So, we definitely are not going to make orbit. We do not have enough delta P for that, but progress, I mean, actually, much more progress than I had three years ago when I tried Max initially. So, things are looking up, but obviously many refinements will need to be done. One thing is that when looking at the 27 ton mass for MAX, uh, that's its in-orbit mass, it wasn't clear whether that included the cargo, 7 ton cargo, or not. Now we, re we used up our kerosene in the MAX spacecraft because of fuel flow issues, so we don't have OMS fuel, so we can't do anything more. Otherwise I'd do a re-entry test 
just for the heck of it. But unfortunately, we don't have RCS to control the spacecraft. So, yeah, uh, it's unclear whether the 27-ton mass includes the 7-ton payload. And given how much Delta V we seem to have, I think maybe the 27 tons does include the payload, but I'm not sure. But I might make a change to the craft's mass based on that and just put the 7 ton payload in. Right now, it doesn't have the payload, so that's important. And it's uh, uh, close to 26 tons. So, with all that being said, that is the progress on the MAX and the AN-225. And I look forward to trying to perfect... Well, actually, it's really hard and really annoying. But anyway, I'll try. <laughs> so, it's very frustrating. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.